grunge music started right here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. But what you don't know is that there's a secret little unassuming studio right here in the back of the parking lot where it all started. Come on in and let's take a look. Part of the, the grunge movement and what Kelly and I were both involved in, it was like, it was the idea of bands coming into one space and recording live together. Nowadays, you know, you can be at home on your laptop now, but and many people make records that way where they're home and they layer one thing at a time. But the heart, still the heart of the studio is humans being in a room together and inter interacting with each other. And so we still have this thriving music scene here in Seattle and, and studios like this are, are just a part of, you know, a band's tool chest. Candlebox. Kelly, were you doing the producing back here as well? They got a deal with uh, Maverick through Madonna's label and we ended up here to make a record. Basically I produce, you know, and it, you know, engineered, mixed, you know, that stuff. And, uh, you know, and it came out the way it came out and people loved it and there you go. A big part of our job is just to make sure that they're in the, the right mood and the right vibe and the space feels right. It's really hard to make things sound bad in a studio. Hey guys, thanks for uh, showing me what this thing is. What, what is this big what thing this here? Thing? <laughs> it's called the Neve Mixing Console. It was designed by a person named Rupert Neve and uh, it's built in 1973, built in England, and that's the name London Bridge Studio. It was originally designed for a studio in Paris called Deca Paris, and that's been here since 85. The studio is actually built around this console. So this thing is kind of the anchor. Yeah. It's kind of a combination of, so the room out there, acoustically immaculate, and it's beautiful space to record strings and drums, but particularly with the, the grunge scene with the drum sounds out there. And then people like Kelly and I that know how to work this stuff and uh, make things sound amazing. The signal that shows up in these desks is very uninterrupted in the console. It's a very fast moving uh, um, signal path in it. So things sound better, sounds more real. And Rupert Neve himself designed this console in a way that matches harmonic frequency. So when you're turning something up, it isn't so much affecting anything else around it. One way I like to think of it is this kind of vintage gear. It's kind of like the difference between a 35 millimeter film photo versus a digital photo, where okay. like digital can be so pure and clean and perfect, it almost can be too perfect. Yeah. Where this is like a 35 millimeter film. A 70 millimeter. So, yeah, <laughs> where it kind of distorts the signal in this way that's actually really desirable. Yeah. So it's kind of like music magic, right? Just yeah. kind of all this sound magic, it just kind of happens, but you have to know how to work all these, what is there, like 5,000 yeah. buttons? Well, you know, <laughs> I think what they confuse people, one, it's got a lot of knobs on it, but in reality, it's just a, a bunch of duplicates. A lot of people know, you know, you know the console that Dave Grohl bought out of Sun, Sun City? Sound City. Sound City, you know, this is, this is like a, a brother to that desk. It's actually predecessor. Predecessor, actually, yeah, yeah. This is the, the one that that was actually designed around. Yeah. For a studio like us to keep this thing here and maintain it, it's very expensive. If you're interested, you know, if people that are really love the studio and love the scene and want to keep something like this here, help keep something like this here, yeah, they contribute money and they get their name put up on the plaque and they get a tour of the studio. Um, and you can also take tours of the studio, and all that does really help a place like this stay you know vibrant and affordable for our local community you know so some kids down the street can still get in here affordably and record their you know their demo in the same place that Allison Chains and program recorded their records right. and Candlebox and Candlebox this is where Eddie Vedder recorded with 10 and Pearl Jam Candlebox Far Behind, Blind Melon, Macklemore, gosh, it goes on. This is the behind the scenes with the Seattle grunge music scene right here at the London Bridge Studio. Thanks for joining the American Dream TV. I'm your host, Celeste Zarling. Follow me and we'll see you next time with the American Dream.